Good morning, folks. We have a good bit to cover today. We'll briefly make it out to an exoplanet, but for the most part, all the news stays close to home. Process begins, as always, with our home star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day here continuing to be dominated by the open flux regions of the coronal holes. Patchy returns, taking over visibility on the Earth-facing disk as the trailing portion reveals the northward extension of the south polar coronal hole. The solar wind streams have not yet arrived at Earth, but up in blue, phi angle action indicates we've been interacting with the heliospheric current sheet, that is what has brought the KP index up off the floor and ended the cosmic ray health alert. FYI, they tend to see the highest health correlations within 12 to 18 hours of the relevant space weather effects. It's a nice little FYI going forward. We're going now to the UK where wind, flooding, and storms are back again. The second week in a row of dangerous waterways and canceled travel comes with a powerful low cell in the North Atlantic. Its coherent flow is taking tremendous heat up its eastern side and into the Arctic Circle. Meanwhile, on the western side of the low, Arctic air is being driven southward and breaking more cold records. Luckily, the temperature is forecast to rise today and alleviate these record-breaking cold events, and probably the frost quakes apparently coming with them. A bit to the south, perhaps you heard that this year has the scary potential to repeat 2019 and 2011 in terms of Mississippi River flooding, and there is significant concern to be had on that front. First, we have to take a look at the Mississippi River watershed. Forms a wide area in the United States here, and go ahead and remember that yellow patch feeding into the major river, because this is the Palmer Index, measures soil moisture, and this is a scary sight with the spring rains due in the coming weeks. Eyes on this heading into the next season. A bit on wildfire smoke, they say that what we don't know about it might hurt us. But what we do know about it is that it isn't hurting photosynthetic processes. In fact, it helps plants use sunlight more efficiently, which helps them clean the air much more quickly. Do you remember that locust infestation in Africa? Well, the plan is apparently now to use a fungus. They will spread this fungus, which produces a toxin that only affects the locusts and grasshoppers. At least they hope that's going to be the case. In a relatively unexciting but scientifically baffling revelation, right now they are munching on dates grown from 2,000-year-old seeds. This appears to be a strange survival mechanism, and they think it could endure for much, much longer, provided it was securely protected somehow. Something tells me there are living seeds from about, oh, 12,000 years ago, just out of reach of the stimulation to grow again, hiding underground. Let's take a moment to jump out to an exoplanet almost exactly Earth's size. In fact, the window of believed mass and size range includes Earth's stats exactly. Problem is, that's where the similarities stop, because the planet probably looks a little bit more like this. It's on a 12-hour orbit, very, very close to its parent star. And while the M dwarf stars are less bright than the Sun, a G-type star, they do tend to have tremendous flare activity that is very unlikely to support the life that probably isn't living on this heat and radiation scorched world. Up next, team from Colorado and NASA coming together to tell us that a trend has not emerged in the acceleration of regional sea level changes. That, and the bits on how it's actually land rise and fall creating the differences in sea level change at various points along the coast, that alleviates the majority of ocean rising concerns for those willing to look down from a more macro perspective. And another team from Colorado's Solar Physics Group is going to use Rosby waves to predict the mid-range solar upticks. This is a common thing on decadal cycle scales and on days to hours timeline as we analyze the magnetic classifications of sunspots. But what if we could know more about when the sunspots would appear in the first place? What if we could see the instability in the wave train weeks in advance? Up next, it's a lesson that Neil deGrasse Tyson really needs to learn. It's the dangers of suggesting people don't know what they're talking about without fully doing the analysis from soup to nuts yourself. This Cruise 2015 paper was suggested to be incorrect without a full-scale proper analysis completed. It was based on suppositions and a guess. And that's when you risk them coming back years later with a deeper dive that definitively strengthens their original conclusion. In this case, that's the control of the Amazon River mass flow by the sunspot cycle. And we have come to our top story. Cosmic rays not only induce cloud nucleation, but they induce lightning. This much has been repeatedly demonstrated. But when a CME from the sun engulfs the earth, those electromagnetic particles are actually helping to block out cosmic rays briefly. 
They call it a four-bush decrease. And the incredible team is back at it again. Co-author Brian Tinsley from Texas gave the particle forcing talk at our 2019 conference, and here, the team is demonstrating that a four-bush decrease, when those cosmic rays are briefly cut off, comes with a definitive drop in lightning strike rates over the tropics. This is the final stamp on that space weather lightning science. And folks, rather than share Tinsley's hour-long presentation or the hour-long climate forcing movie, in 11 minutes here with scenario number four, you can see the entire story of the sun and climate. Well, everything except the Beaufort Gyre cold climate bomb being much worse than they feared and waiting to be unleashed, which came out two days after the scenario number four video. But alas, you can always mention when sharing that NASA and Yale dropped that cold climate bomb just two days later. The papers keep coming out, confirming the science of the sun's ruling the atmosphere of this planet. Scenario number four, linked below. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.